We are gathering in Christ, sharing his love. And we are here to love, listen, learn, and lead. We're glad you've joined us for worship here at Gloria Dei Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida, on this, our third Sunday in the season of Advent. We hope that you will be drawn closer to God through it and that your hearts will be filled with love and joy, especially at this Advent season. Please remember to call someone after the service. I say this every week, and this is the best way that we can keep in touch with each other, support and encourage one another, and build up the body of Christ. All are welcome to join us on Tuesday afternoon at 2 in the parking lot for our drive-in communion. You can partake of the sacrament in the comfort and safety of your vehicle while listening to the service on your FM radio. Hope to see you there. Please email or call the church office if you need a ride. Members, please plan to join our virtual coffee hour on Zoom every Sunday morning at 11. The link is in your email. Worship will continue online for the foreseeable future. Please keep praying for an end to this pandemic and for the health and safety of all. Now will you please join me at the font as together we confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson for the third Sunday of Advent is found in Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our Lord, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to dismay his display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. 
and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. testify to the light so that all might believe through him he himself was not the light but he came to testify to the light this is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him who are you he confessed and did not deny it but confessed I am NOT the Messiah and they asked him what then are you Elijah he said I am NOT are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize you with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I know we're only on the third Sunday in Advent, but I've been thinking more and more lately, not about Advent, but about Christmas. Advent, of course, is this time of preparation for the wonder of Christmas, and back in my day especially, it was time uh, to prepare for the yearly Christmas pageant at church. There's something very special about Christmas pageants, even those in which everything seems to go wrong. Robert Fulgham tells about one such Christmas pageant. Trying to outdo previous years, this particular church decided to rent a live donkey for Mary to ride in on. It sounded like a good idea at the time. Have you ever noticed that a lot of things sound like a good idea at the time? The day of the pageant arrived. The congregation sang beautifully some familiar Christmas carols, and the angel choir, complete with their halos, got through their first big number almost on key and in unison. The time came for the grand entrance of Joseph and Mary, with Mary riding on the donkey. She was carrying what later proved to be a Raggedy Andy doll, and then it happened. The donkey made two hesitant steps through the door of the chancel, took a look at the whole scene, and locked his legs. The donkey would not move, and the entire procession came to a halt. Jerking on his halter had no effect. Neither did some wicked kicking from the Virgin Mary. Just then, the president of the trustees, seated in the front row and dressed in his Sunday best, rose to the rescue. Now, the floor to this chancel was polished concrete. With another man pulling on the donkey's halter, 
the president of the trustees crouched at the stern end of the donkey and pushed, slowly sliding the rigid beast across the floor inch by inch. The choir director chose that moment to turn on the tape recorder, which blared forth a mighty chorus from the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. This scared the donkey, but by this time everyone was laughing. Organize, organizers of that event vowed never to put on another Christmas pageant. Fulgham writes of this experience, the memory of the laughter, though, outlives the memory of the hassle. And hope, he writes, Hope always makes us believe that this time, this year, we will get it right. Christmas is about the unexpected. I read about another pageant recently. There's another children's pageant. The innkeeper was played by a boy named Ralph, who had very much wanted to play the role of Joseph. He didn't get the part and had initially refused to be part of the program, but his mother and the director insisted that Ralph do his duty and be part of the pageant. So he was cast as the innkeeper. But Ralph had other ideas. Ralph was bent on revenge. When that part of the pageant occurred in which Joseph inquired about a room, Ralph grinned and announced, Come on in! We've got plenty of room! The audience, especially Ralph's mother and the director, gasped. Joseph and Mary were stunned. They expected to be turned away, but obediently they walked into the inn. But the young man who played Joseph was equal to the occasion. He looked around, turned to the audience, and said, Hey, this place is a dump. We'd rather stay in a stable. There are some surprises that we can do without. Christmas is not one of them. God comes into our world as a tiny baby. Angels sing and shepherds rejoice and the world is changed forever. And that's one surprise that the world is still coming to terms with. Christmas is also a time of miracles and mysteries. In the wonderful Christmas show presented each year at Rockefeller Center, there's a scene acted out from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. It seems that the Cratchit family receives a wonderful gift of a prized turkey. Only Tiny Tim offers an explanation as to who could possibly have sent the turkey. When he says the name Mr. Scrooge, his mother says, why would Mr. Scrooge lose his sense and do something like this, to which Tiny Tim replies one word, Christmas. That one word says it all, Christmas. John the baptizer knew the truth of that word even though he never uttered that word one time in his life. Christmas explains how stingy people can become generous, tired people can become energized, Lonely people can feel loved, and that is why we look forward to this beautiful time of year with such anticipation. Now, our time of waiting and watching and preparing is taking on a whole new look this year because of the pandemic. We've lived through nine months of stress and worry and uncertainty, suffering and anxiety. Numbers of new cases of COVID-19 are on the increase, as are hospitalizations and deaths from this dread disease. Nothing in our world seems certain or right. But especially at this time of year, we are reminded that through all of this, we continue to be loved by a God who cares enough about us to send a son, to be Emmanuel, to be God with us. John the baptizer proclaimed Christ's presence then and for the past 2,000 years, we've had the promise of eternal life through Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. This promise is true and gives us hope even during the troubled times that we're experiencing right now. Heed John's call to repentance. 
Make straight the way of the Lord. Give thanks to God for the bountiful goodness that you have received this day and always. May each of us find hope, peace, joy, and love during this Advent season. And in our hearts and minds, may we all experience a Christmas pageant of, short, of sorts, one in which the donkey actually walks into the chancel, one in which the innkeeper turns Joseph and Mary away, and one that always ends with the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness, that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in the recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength, with our spirits weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Grant your healing touch to Jan, John, Richard, Jane, Diane, Bill, Paul, Fred, Ray and Roseanne, Anne, Edith, Earl, and those we name before you now on our lips or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. On night, all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with those who might be watching this video with you. Um, and please call someone on the phone after the service and share that same peace with them. Normally we take up our offering right now, but we're in anything but normal times. So we do thank those who have continued to support the congregation financially by sending in your tithes and offerings and also giving through the portal on our website. For those of you who have been impacted negatively by the coronavirus, we continue to keep you all in our prayers. Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen.
Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to everyone and uh, I'm hoping that everybody has their radio on and can hear what's going on. Um, if you'd like to stay afterwards and uh, do any socializing with anyone who's here, um, please wait until those who would like to leave immediately have uh, proceeded up to um, and out of the parking lot. I'd ask that you all prepare your communion elements at this time. If you would, please take the wafer out of the top of the container and get it someplace accessible and then uh, slide the uh, covering off of the grape juice so that when we get to that portion of the service where we, we will be partaking of the communion elements that you'll be ready. Uh, please feel free if there's someone else in your vehicle to uh, serve each other in your vehicle. Also if you would wait until after the Lord's Prayer and then at my direction we would take the elements and we would um, eat and drink at the same time. Also, some have asked about Christmas Eve service. We will be celebrating Christmas Eve service here in the parking lot at 2 o'clock, our regular time, but it'll be on Thursday, December the 24th. Uh, that week, we will not have a Tuesday parking uh, drive-in communion. Uh, on Tuesday, we will uh, wait until Christmas Eve, Thursday, December 24th, 2 o'clock, right here in the parking lot. We will have some special music. We'll be able to sing some hymns of the season and in the safety and comfort of your own vehicle you'll be able to sing as loud as you want. So we're looking forward to that and what a joyous time of the season it is. 
and uh, of course we're starting to feel like it's that time of the season as uh, those of you who have come from up north know and have been to a Christmas up north. So as we begin our service let us confess our sins and hear the words of forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel, assigned for the third Sunday in Advent, comes to us from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dr. Thomas Hilton tells a story of a man with a very odd name. His name was Horville Sash. Horville had a very humble job in his company, a job in the lowest basement of the building. He was a mailroom clerk. As mailroom clerk, there was no one who was lower than he was. One day he came across a bug scurrying across the floor. Horville may have had the lowliest job in the company, but he was bigger than that bug. So he raised his foot to flatten the hapless little creature. Now this story is a fable, and as you know, creatures talk in fables. And the bug speaks. He says, spare me, and I will grant you your fondest wishes. Horville spared the bug. His reward, a wish. And Horville wished, I wish to be promoted to the second floor. And his wish was granted. Instantly he found himself working.
sleeping on the second floor with his faithful bug by his side. Now Crystal promised me that there wasn't going to be any wind out here. And uh, so you know what happened to that one. Back to our story. But wait. Horville heard footsteps on the ceiling of floor number two. A higher level meant higher wages. After consulting with his bug, Horville rose to the third floor job of sales coordinator. But that didn't end his ambition. And on and on it went. Horville was never satisfied. He wished for still more promotions. He went to the 10th floor, then to the 20th, then to the 50th, then to the 70th. Still, he wasn't satisfied. Now, Horville was sitting by the indoor pool one day on floor 96 when he discovered a stairway leading up to another floor. He scrambled up the stairs and found himself on the roof. At last, he was the highest, the greatest. Finally content, he headed for the down stairway when he came across a boy on the edge of the building with his eyes closed. What are you doing? asked Torval. I'm praying, whispered the boy. To whom? The boy pointed a finger upwards toward heaven and he said, to God. Immediately, Horval went into a panic. Was there a floor above him? He couldn't see it, and he couldn't hear any footsteps shuffling around up there, just clouds. And he asked the boy, do you mean there's somebody above me, somebody greater than I am? Yes, said the boy. Well, you guessed it. Horval promptly summoned the bug and made yet another wish. He wished, I wish to be God. Little bug, make me the greatest. Put me in the type of position that only God would hold if he were here on this earth. The very next day, Horville began work in the basement of the company as a mailroom clerk. might seem like a really silly story, yet another fable. But our God has done this very thing by sending His Son. Jesus came to us as a helpless baby, the lowest of the low, so that we might know that humility is our true strength, that sacrifice for the sake of others is our true power and that living the gospel every day is our true love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now join our hearts together as we share this Holy Supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Supper we may know the unity that we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God, for the people of God. Let us join in this supper with joy. Please now, if you would take your wafer very reverently. This is the body of Christ, given for you. Eat ye all of it. Blood of Christ shed for you, drink ye all of it. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for this gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that through it we might be strengthened in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank you for coming out today. If you have any comments or suggestions about what you've experienced here today, please call or email the church office. And please, at this time, give me just a second to get up to the exit uh, so I can give everyone a COVID-19-approved sign of peace. Thank you for coming. <laughs>